Hi again. Uh, yep, so I jumped off quickly just to check what the sound quality was like and what the loading quality was like. It actually seems fine. So um, judge just maybe it's uh, maybe it's just a loading thing. Try and drop the quality if you can, or close other open tabs or something and check that out. It seemed fine on playback. Um, it seemed much better than it had before. So I'm hoping it's just a problem on. Not my end, probably on your end. I'm sorry about that, but I hope it's just a problem on your end. Um. Okay, back to what we were looking at. Um, I worked for this company, they did digital magazines, so people who had like recipes that they wanted to do, or sports teams, this company would design stuff in InDesign. They'd do video production for like small segments of stuff, so interviews and the cover would be animated. And then they would, we would, cut that all up and put that uh, into an HTML thing on the internet. And I worked at this place for about six months, did some really fun stuff, learned a lot of JavaScript at the time, because just before that I'd been doing so much PHP, um, and so JavaScript was a nice change, a lot of it. And I put something together over those six months that they're still using, I think. I mean, let's see if we can find something. Okay, great. So, apparently it looks better. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, Spar Saver Magazine. What does this look like? Okay, so this was one of the recipe things. Um, there's like a food chain in South Africa and they... this company produces this magazine for them. And you can see it's kind of like a step through thing. So there's the video I was talking about, and then you can kind of go next, 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 um, and it'll preload stuff, and you know, kind of like CSS animation, JavaScript animation, some video stuff, uh, which is fun. Which is fun. They do other stuff as well. So WP Rugby Magazine, magazine. I hope it's not on my end. Sorry, Judge Joss says that it keeps on dropping. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what to tell you, hey? It's not dropping frames here, but then again, it's not dropped frames before and it's still been kinda of bad, so maybe it'll be better on the uh, in the archives. Maybe. I'll just carry on and assume it's working um, for some people, and if it doesn't work at all, I'll never stream again or something. <laughs> okay, this was the other thing. Um, so they did those recipe based magazines, they do sports based ones, it's not actually loading this video completely. Um, probably because my connection so slow. But, uh, have a look here, share.js, does that work? Let's see, js, share.js, I'll figure this out, um, let me see, oh, no, look, let's go to the magazine and let's inspect this, it might, the connection might also be dropping just because my machine, uh, my internet's slow and, Might be that. I'm, I hope it's not. Let's get off of the video loading. Okay, so have a look at this. Generated with CoffeeScript. It's like a, it's a big old file which kind of just bundles uh, a lot of stuff in here. But the thing that I want you to, the thing that I want to point out, check again. Friends, look okay. The thing I want to point out is have a look here. There's an array for pa an object for pages, and then a bunch of different pages are declared, and they each have an HTML and a CSS and a JavaScript. So what this code does is it uh, it loads up 
and loads the first page and the HTML and CSS and JavaScript on that. And then it uh, displays that. And we'll try to preload a few pages ahead, maybe a few pages behind, I don't remember exactly. And then uh, as you keyboard navigate to the left and to the right, or click on the next and the previous buttons, it'll load, it'll show the next page with a slight animation and run some custom JavaScript for that page. And each page's HTML thing just has like the containers for the text on it and for the video on it and clickable links and that kind of thing. So, I stopped working at that company. I worked at another company called uh, Connector, which changed names a few times and is now called Next, and they're an awesome bunch of people. And um, over you know, over time, I revisited this idea a few times because it was fun to do initially. I thought maybe I'd improve upon it. And every sort of eight months or so, I would rewrite it in spare time. Um, and it's kind of just transitioned over the years. Like it started as a copy script thing, as you saw, it was compiled from copy script initially. And then um, recently, I tried doing it out in ES6 base code, or tried porting it from copy script to ES6, and was relatively successful. And I've actually presented slides for maybe seven or eight talks using this JavaScript. So presentations using um, using just code I've rolled myself. I also created a module for Silverstripe, which like a very, very simple module, which allows you to save these pages in a CMS and order them in a CMS, and then renders the front end, which is pretty useful. But because of the recent React stuff, I actually want to see how... Uh, I, I kind of just want to mix and match a bit and see if I can get something that is relatively well composed using React and ES6 classes and um, that still allows a bit of flexibility in defining custom slides and maybe be able to use this thing for presentations. I don't think I'll be able to use it for ZenCon which happens like next week um, if there's not enough time for that but I would like to try and see what happens, see what happens, see how nice I can make it. So. Uh, I'll start something out in it, and we'll take it from there. Uh, let's make a directory which is called Reflow React. Seems fun. Reflow React, and I'll use trusty Atom because what not? Mm, coffee. Are you still there, Judge Joss? No. <laughs> oh well, it's me. I'm just talking to myself on the internet, like, like I guess a few people from time to time. Oh well, maybe someone will watch this in post. Um, now I want to kind of use this, I want to use a similar sort of model that I've used before. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll have a look at what the previous code's doing, because it's using ES6. Um, and it's got a couple of things here, so the things that I want from here are scripts and maybe the dev dependencies, those are cool. And I'll just format this, uh, not like npm or nuke it the first time I update something. But this will, uh, essentially this will this the full way. Yes, the dev work. Okay, so these two commands, I've got two scripts here, build and start. Um, and you run those by saying, oh, I'll show you how you run those just now. But the build one runs Browserify with a Babel transformer. Now, if you've never heard of Babel or Browserify, I won't talk about Browserify much, but uh, babeljs.io. This is a site, this is an awesome site and service for learning ES6 um, so there's so there's a lot of documentation on ES6 features there's also uh, a web-based editor to try the stuff out so you can do 
when it loads. We'll see what it can do. <laughs> Let's see, okay. So it's rendered some nonsense out here. Um, but let's say class dog for for a terrible example and constructor console log wolf. This shows you what the the ES6 code will look like and what it will be converted to to be ES5 compatible so that it can run in browsers. Babel also supports um, the React JavaScript uh, superset language called JSX and we'll look at an example of what that code looks like but um, it does it automatically so we don't need to do any extra code to make that work which is pretty cool. So build builds the stuff. Um, it takes in reflow.js which we'll make just now and outputs to like an underscore version of that or you know whatever and also runs uglify on it just so that we can get a really reduced file size for this. And then Watch does exactly the same thing, but instead of Browserify, which just bundles things together, Watchify does what Browserify does, but it watches those files, which is you know, quite an up name. Uh, if we do npm run start, this will scan that reflow.js file and keep on recompiling it into the distribution stuff, which means we can use that to test and run it during development and that's fine. Tweets, yay! <laughs> okay, so that's what Babel does. Now, to get the stuff to work, um, we've got package.json which has some dependencies, so let's npm install. And we don't need any of this stuff right now. Couldn't care less about that stuff. Copy. <laughs> oh. All these buttons. That's so cool. I'm very new to Twitch, so you know. I don't think this is uploading a lot of data. The throughput's very low. I don't know if it's uploading a lot of data. I hope it is. Oh, okay, uh, npm install. This will take some time because slow connection. And hopefully it doesn't nuke the stream while it's going. <laughs> There it is. I have the slowest internet connection, it's the worst. Okay, that wasn't too slow. So now we should have some node modules. Uh, Let's just make a git ignore for this. Git ignore. Because uh, we don't want that showing up in the git repo. Now, um, things we referenced in that npm script. The first was a reflow.js file. And we also had a disk directory. Hmm, what else? Okay, so now when we go npm run build, it should build the uh, ES5 version and the minified version. Yay. Okay, so it's just loading. The only thing it's loading in is the require stuff from Babel, but that's fine. Now we can get to writing some JavaScript. Let's think about this. So in the in this in this library. Um, let me show you an example of what this mm, latest iteration looks like. Here's an example presentation, and you can actually run this code uh, and have the presentation on the local machine. 